All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about molarity. So questions to think about as we're talking about molarity. What does it mean for something to be concentrated? And what does concentration tell us in a practical sense? So molarity of a solution. So a solution, as we've learned, is a homogeneous or homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. They have to be evenly blended, where the solute is the substance that is present in the smaller amount. It's the one that's being dissolved. The solvent is the substance present in the larger amount that's doing the dissolving. So if we have a soft drink as our solution, then water would be the solvent and then the sugar and carbon dioxide would be the solutes. In air, our solvent is nitrogen because nitrogen is the largest component of air. The solute should be all the rest of the gases that are dissolved in the air, such as oxygen, argon, and methane. So we know that in solutions, the solutes are the parts that are dissolved. The solvent is the vast majority of it. When the solvent is water, the solution is said to be aqueous, which means water. Okay, so again, this is just a recap about solvents, solutes, and solutions. So if you need extra help on what a solution is, please refer back to my previous video. Molarity, which is represented by a capital M, or molar concentration, is defined as the number of moles of solute per liter of solution. This tells you how concentrated a solution is. The higher the molarity, so the higher the M value, the more concentrated the solution is, which means that we have more particles squished into a tiny area. So if you look at this picture right here, we have a concentrated solution and a dilute solution. Concentrated means we have a lot of particles packed into one area. We have a lot of moles of substance in the same amount of volume. Dilute means kind of watered down, basically. Not as many particles, they're more spread out. Um, here you can see we have the same substance, the same solution, but this is more dilute or watered down than the one on the left. So molarity can be represented by the equation moles of solute divided by liters of solution. So that the units of molarity, capital M, are moles per liter. You can also rearrange this equation, depending on what you're solving for, to be moles is equal to the molarity times your volume in liters, as well as liters is equal to moles divided by the molarity concentration. Now notice that here we're using liters as our unit of volume. You cannot use milliliters, you have to convert it into liters first. And that's because Molarity is defined as moles of solute per liter, not milliliter. So it's important to know the concentration of a solution because some solutions can be more acidic or basic. Some of them will only take place when the solution is in high concentration, uh, especially if you're dealing with acid in the lab. Sometimes dilute acids won't react like if you use common household vinegar, it may not react, but if you use lab grade concentrated acetic acid, it's the same substance, but if it's more concentrated, sometimes it'll work. And also for safety, because sometimes if you have a very concentrated substance, uh, such as um, a highly concentrated acid has a high molarity, then it can be very dangerous. A lot of the times in the lab we'll use either 0 0.1, 0 0.5, or even one molar acid. Whereas in the cabinet where it's stored, it might originally be five molar. That's too strong to use in a general lab with students. So it's important to make sure that it's diluted enough to where it's safe to use. So that's the importance of molarity is just knowing what your concentration is so that you can know exactly what substance you are dealing with. Now let's practice how to use molarity to solve problems. 
Okay, so this one gets a little bit complicated to start, but let's go ahead. All right, so let's say that I have an aqueous solution of glucose, and I wanted to determine the molarity of two liters of a solution that contains 50 grams of glucose. The strategy is we're gonna convert the mass of glucose, 50 grams, into moles by dividing the mass by the molar mass of glucose. Then we're gonna use the equation for molarity to find molarity. So if you look at the notes that I've posted, I've worked out how to do this. The basics of it is, I wanna find the moles of glucose first. That's because I'm given grams. If I were given moles here, we wouldn't have any problem. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the grams, the mass of glucose, I'm gonna divide by its molar mass. If you recall, molar mass is the one where you add up the individual molar mass of every atom. So I added up the mass of six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens, which adds up to roughly 180 grams per mole. So that gives me 0 0.277 moles of glucose. Now I want to take that moles of glucose and convert it into molarity using the equation. All right, so the equation for molarity is molarity is equal to moles divided by liters. I have 0 0.277 moles of glucose. I have two liters of solution. 0 0.277 divided by two is roughly 0.14 molar. Notice that molar is capitalized, so capital M for molar. All right, let's switch PowerPoints briefly, and let's take a look at how to solve some of these other problems. All right, so let's take a look at this. So what is the molarity of a 35 milliliter solution with 0.3 moles of sodium hydroxide? Now, if you look closely, this is in milliliters. We need to convert this into liters first to match our equation. I'm already given moles, so I don't need to worry about any of that grams to moles stuff. Okay, so let's go back. So, Let's say that I have 35 milliliters. Moving the decimal place over three times, one, two, three, 0 0.035 liters. 0 0.3 moles, so I would do 0.3 divided by 0 0.035. So let me type that out. All right, so I have 0 0.035 liters and 0 0.3 moles. So I'm plugging it in, molar concentration is equal to my moles, 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.035 liters. All right, and then you would just solve that. On the next one, what is the molarity of a 35 milliliter solution with 0.3 grams of sodium hydroxide? Okay, first convert 0.3 grams into moles by dividing by the molar mass of NaOH. Once you've done that, you can plug in molarity is equal to, again, we have 35 milliliters, which we already determined was 0 0.035. Okay, so I'm gonna take moles of sodium hydroxide, divide by 0 0.035. And that'll give me my answer. All right, so, the behavior of solutions depends on the compound itself as well as its concentration. So two solutions can contain the same compounds but behave very differently because of the proportions of those compounds in solution. Again, I can have two solutions of acetic acid 
um, known as household vinegar. And it can behave very differently depending on how concentrated it is. All right, so concentration of a solution, the more solute, the more concentrated. So one teaspoon of salt per cup of water is gonna be not very salty. If you put three tablespoons of salt per cup of water, you're talking extremely salty. Like that's the kind of salt that you would use to rinse out your mouth if you have a cut. Okay, very salty there. All right, so molarity is just one way to measure the concentration of a solution. Here is the equation again. Molarity, capital M, is just the moles over the volume in liters. A one molar or 1.00 capital M solution contains one mole of solute for every one liter of solution. And the proportion stays the same. Now, if you pour some of that out, whatever you pour out is gonna have the same concentration as long as it was mixed well in the first place. So the units of molarity are moles per liter or capital M. They mean the same thing. So if we're trying to prepare a one molar solution, let's say of table salt, I would need one mole of sodium chloride. If you look at the molar mass of sodium chloride, sodium, has a mass of about, let's see, I think about 23, chlorine has a mass of about 35.5, add them up, they have a molar mass of 58.5 grams. So if you wanted one mole of sodium chloride, you would need to weigh out 58.5 grams of table salt on a scale. You would also, need to add enough water to make one liter of the solution. Now that's the total volume of solution. We don't wanna add exactly 1.00 liters of water though. And if you think about this, think about what would happen if you were trying to fill up a cup, eight ounce cup, measuring cup that you'd use in the kitchen. Let's say that you put in maybe three tablespoons of salt first. You wanted to make one cup of salt water. So if you put in exactly eight ounces of water into that cup with the three tablespoons of salt that you've already put in there, which is a pretty big amount, it's probably gonna overfill, okay? So we don't want to add exactly 1.00 liters. We want to put in the solid first, then add enough water to make exactly 1.00 liters. So the amount of water is not gonna exactly be 1.00. Okay, so I would take my volumetric flask, I would pour in one mole of sodium chloride, which we measured out to be 58.5 grams. So pour in your solid first. Then using some purified water, we want it to be purified so that it's not containing any contaminants like from the tap. And we're gonna add that water until we get to the one liter mark. On here, it's where that line is. Okay, so we add our solid first, then we fill with water until we reach the final volume, okay? And then we would, of course, we would swirl it, stir it, or something else to get it to mix all the way. All right, so let's practice. So what is the molar concentration if you have 0 0.5 moles of sodium chloride in one liter of solution? This is a simple one. You're already given moles, you're given liters, all you have to do is plug in. All right, so my equation is molarity is equal to moles divided by volume. Okay, I have 0.5 moles divided by one liter equals 0.5 moles per liter. Five, uh, 0.5 M is your concentration. 
what is the molar concentration if you have 0 0.5 moles of sodium chloride, same thing, in 0 0.5 liters of solution? Now, I have half the volume, but the same amount in moles. So, same amount, half the volume. So what I'm predicting is we're gonna have twice the concentration, okay? So again, moles divided by liters gives me one molar. Indeed, if our volume is cut in half, but I have the same amount in moles, the volume is going to double, or the molarity is going to double. So we went from 0.5 molar to one molar concentration. We got more concentrated. Let's look at this one. What is the concentration if you have 10 grams of sodium chloride in one liter of solution? Okay, so this is going back to what we started on. Here I'm given grams, I'm not given moles. Okay, I have grams, I need moles. I can convert from grams to moles, but I need the molar mass. So to find the molar mass, I'm gonna add the mass of sodium and the mass of chlorine. Sodium has a mass of about 23 grams per mole. You can get that on the periodic table. Chlorine has a mass of 35.5 grams per mole. Added together, it's a mass of about 58.5 grams per mole as the molar mass of sodium chloride. So 10 grams divided by 58.5 grams per mole is equal to, I think a different number than that. Okay, but that's how you would solve it. Okay. So again, molarity is equal to moles of solute divided by the volume in liters, must be in liters. Okay, there's how it's simplified, moles over liters. If you have moles and volume, you can find molarity. If you have molarity and volume, you can find the number of moles. If you have molarity and moles, you can find the volume. And if you have the number of moles, finally, you can find the grams. Okay, more practice. So how many moles of hydrochloric acid are present in 2.5 liters of 0.10 molar hydrochloric acid? Okay, so this time I'm looking for something different. I'm looking for the number of moles instead. So let's take a look at how to find moles when we're given liters and the concentration. So I'm given that I have 2.5 liters of solution. I have 0.10 molar hydrochloric acid. Okay, that's my concentration. I wanna find the moles. So I wanna rearrange my initial equation to use moles is equal to molarity times volume, capital M times L. So the number of moles is gonna be 0.10 times 2.5, which should give you 0.25 moles of hydrochloric acid. All right, let's look at another one. What volume of a 0.10 molar sodium hydroxide solution is needed to provide 0.5 moles of sodium hydroxide? Here, I'm given the moles and the concentration. I want to find the volume. So I'm told that I have 0.5 moles of sodium hydroxide. I have a solution with a concentration of 0.10 molar and I want to find the volume. All right, so I'm gonna rearrange my equation again. Volume is equal to moles divided by molarity. So I have 0.5 moles divided by 0.10 molar is equal to five liters. You don't have to do these middle steps this is just to show you the process of how they're converting between the different amounts. If you just want to use this first part right here and solve it, that is perfectly acceptable, okay?
these are just some extra information showing you how we went from moles over m to liters. Okay, this is just the background information. So my volume would be five liters. All right, so that is how you solve for various things when looking at the concentration of a solution.